Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a gangster film from Japan, Japanese language English subs, released in the year 2010, directed by Takeshi Katano, and this film is called Outrage. So Outrage is set in the Yakuza world. Uh, the Yakuza is the Japanese mafia. You've got two warring clans. You've got the Ikamoto family and the Marasu family. So they're at each other's throats, but now they've called a truce. So they're brothers in arms. So they do deals together and they really don't get in each other's way. But the Ikamoto family, they actually want to take over the turf of the Marasu family. In order to do that, they have to try and make the Marasi head boss retire. So they can't go out and kill him because that's going to be all at war. So they want to do it very discreetly. So they get the services of Itomo, a Tomo is this guy who's a high-ranking official, but he's very ruthless. He's very brutal, and he doesn't have any compassion or remorse. So he seems like the ideal guy to try and shake things up within the Marasi family. So when Otomo is sent to do his business, this is where he realizes that maybe the Ikamoto family have dangerous plans for him as well. And so he doesn't know who to trust. He's torn between both of these clans, and he realizes that maybe the only person he can trust is himself, and this uh, this whole web of lies and deceit are going to add up into a very um, blood thirsty climax that I'm not going to give away so what's in store for Otomo is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Outrage. Coming into this movie, I was very intrigued. Takashi Katano is a very iconic figure as far as Japanese crime is concerned, as far as badassery is concerned. I haven't actually uh, been you know, ex exposed to his work, but I've heard a lot about him. So Outrage was his comeback film. He hadn't been doing movies for, for quite a while, so I was very uh, interested to see what he could deliver. Now when it comes to Japanese Yakuza films, two movies really stand out in my mind. You've got Why Don't You Play in Hell, that was directed by Shian Sono, and you've got Ichi the Killer, that was directed by Takashi Mika. Now, the reason why I love these movies is because it does take a very generic world as far as Yakuza films, as gangster films are concerned, but it spins it on its ear. It creates something of its own. It's an own world. It feels like an own mythology. And so Takashi Mika and Shian Sono have created movies that are gangster films, but stand alone from the rest of the, of, of the pack. And so a lot of these gangster movies, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. And that was my biggest criticism of this genre. So coming into a Takeshi Kitano film, for the fact that he had so many credentials, I was hoping that this movie would have a Takeshi Kitano feel to it, his own identity. I've said in a few other reviews that the great filmmakers can make movies of their own, in that you watch a movie and straight from the style you know it's the one particular director. And that's where I believe Shian Sono and Takeshi Miko do very well, and they are the lead runners as far as Japanese cinema is concerned. So Takeshi Kitano, you know, mixed in with, an, with a, uh, a gangster film, it does deliver what it promises. This is a very brutal film. It's a very, very nasty film. I thought the violence is definitely the thing that stands out the most in this movie. So if you are a fan of gangster films, I will say that it does provide something different in the levels of brutality that this movie has. There are some scenes that were incredibly cringeworthy. They really made me shiver, and I really like that. It's because it captured the world very well. Everything in this movie felt dirty. Everything felt gritty. No one could be trusted, and that everything felt corrupted. And so you feel corrupted watching it. And so I think the violence really really indicated the world that it was depicting and it didn't flinch away from the violence and so it is actually making you feel very uncomfortable and that's exactly what you want from a, uh, a Yakuza film is that Goodfellas from the United States that made you feel very uneasy in, in a world that you didn't want to be a part of so it's not really glamorizing the lifestyle to the point where you feel okay I want to join these people it really telling you okay it makes you feel okay I don't want to be part of these guys world I, I don't want to be in here because you don't know who to trust it's not a game of honor it's not a game of respect it's it's a game of basically betrayal and cowardice, and it's showing everything that is negative in a very negative world. And so Takashi Katano has created something very dark, but at the same time giving you something to laugh at too. This is a very darkly funny film, and most of the comedy comes from the main character of Otomo, who is also played by Takashi Katano. So he had a lot to work with in this film, and I thought his character of Otomo was by far the best thing of this film, is that he had no remorse. He was very ruthless in what he did. He was a typical villain, but because this world has all, you know, everyone's a villain, you you almost feel as though this guy's an anti-hero. This is the good guy out of the rest of them, but what he's actually doing is very bad. So I think Takeshi Katana did a good job with his character of Otomo to actually get the viewer's support. And so you feel, all right, this is a good guy, but when you stop to think about it, no, he's not a good guy. He's just doing things to people that are even worse than him. And so it doesn't give you that glamorized version of a Yakuza world. It gives you the ugliness to it and how much of a waste it is and how when you're dealing with people in this world, they can't
can't be trusted because they've got no honor. And so Atomo's character was very funny. There are some scenes, the way he just reacts is very subtle, but I thought it was very funny. So that was uh, by far the best part. And then, as I said, the level of brutality really elevates it to something a little bit different. And I thought that the way that these characters interact with each other and they're betraying each other, I thought it was fairly fun to watch. But unfortunately, the biggest problems to this movie, there are a few of them. The biggest problem is the fact that it doesn't create an identity of its own. And so it does become very predictable. I know how I knew how this was going to play out. I knew who was going to be left standing at the end because I've seen it before. And when you've seen it before, it's kind of like a cheat sheet where you're checking it and you think, okay, yep, tick that. This character's done that. This character's going to do this, tick. This character is going to bribe this character, tick. And so I could just, I could... Uh, you predict what was going to happen, I could see in the future, and because I could see in the future, it does eliminate a lot of the curiosity, it does eliminate a lot of the suspense. So if it wasn't for the violence, you really could have just thrown this film away as just another typical gangster film. Then you've also got the problem of the characters. I thought Thomas' character was brilliant, but the rest of the characters, there's too many in the film to really get to know any of them. So when bad things are happening, you don't really care. And unfortunately with Thomas' character, apart from the fact he's vicious and actually quite funny in what he was doing, you felt as though he lacked personality himself, that the corruption of this world had eaten away his soul and that he was very empty. So apart from laughing at a few things and apart from just seeing this badass do do his thing, you don't really care about him as a person. Unfortunately, that is the case with a lot of these other characters, that when they're cardboard cutouts, it's all about the situation. When you've got a very predictable situation, you feel like, okay, this movie doesn't really have anything that's going to make me want to watch it again. And so that was the biggest criticism of this film. But I also have other criticisms. I thought the editing was quite bad. Now, Takeshi Kitano, he, I, th I was expecting a little bit more from him. There are some scenes that are very well shot, especially the action scenes and some of the violent scenes are actually very well done. But there are other editing moments. Now, the biggest editing problems are within the transition from scene to scene. I thought it was very, very clunky. It didn't really feel like a very fluent experience. So the continuity was all over the place. It was very disjointed. So it felt like just one scene and then another scene and then another scene. It didn't feel like it had that continuity to transfer from one moment to another. And so it does become quite noticeable. And I thought there was moments that were felt very amateurish and there are other moments that felt very good. So there's a very strong inconsistent base as far as production is concerned. So right at the end, as I said, I kind of knew what was going to happen, and I will, I'm will. i not going to say this is a bad film, because as I said, the brutality and the character of Otomo were absolutely fantastic, but it just didn't have enough going for it to actually separate it from the usual gangster fare, and so if you didn't really get a chance to watch this, you're not really going to be missing much, because if you play another film of a gangster quality, you've probably seen this movie. So it doesn't go down the path of Shian Sono and Takashi Miike, which is a great shame, but having said that, this is the first experience with Takashi Kitano that I've had. I'm going to have to watch a few of his other films to really get a grip of how, what this director's like, but this definitely wasn't the best start. So it's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination, but considering the director, I was expecting a bit more, but I'm still going to give Outrage three stars. Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time you watch your movies, and I'll see you later.